we'll proceed to write our navba implementation so here within my common i'm going to create a nav bar here let's use jxx and over here i'm going to bring in my react we don't know how it's done then my use states then i'm going to also be creating the navbar.css so let me do that quickly in my css page in my style here i'm going to create a css file here called navbar so for every component i want to have a css styling for it so here i'm going to import that here which is going to be dot dot slash dot dot go back then go to style then it's going to be in nav bar as we received, as we named nav bar dot css so this is going to be our css style then i'm going to i'm going to import nav link and i'm also going to un import use navigate as we'll be navigating over here as well so that is okay then i'm going to bring my api service as well our api service is going to be used everywhere okay that's good so let me create properly let's properly dev in so let's create our component and here I'm going to so if I go to my styling here we can see this where we want to create our nav bar let me check if I can bring that up okay it's not bringing up okay so this is what we want to create our nav bar we want to have the logo here the search button where you can search an item whenever you click on search it's going to display the item that was searched for and we have these feeds so here i'm just going to create a variable to hold the search input type to hold the value you want to search for so let's just call this search value and set search value this is going to be our use state And this is going to be and a string. So whenever you are typing a search item to search, this is going to store the item by using a use state to store it. So I'm just going to bring down my navigate. Yeah, in case we want to navigate to another page, get to let's just use the navigate here. Then I'm also going to create just going to check if it is a user or an admin so that's going to determine on which which list of pages that will be displayed for the admin or user to move, navigate to so if you are authenticated you want to show your account if you are not authenticated will like show a page for you to log in if you're an admin we will show an admin profile here so that's so we're just going to use this to check if you are an admin is admin and then also check if you are a normal user so this is going to be our api service dot authenticated is going to check for other normal users then I'm just going to create a variable, a function to set the user search value. So when you type in the value you want to search, you just want to use this to collect the value and then store it on our search value variable. So this is just going to be set search value. E dot i get a 
Okay, so this is going to be search set set value a dot target dot the value. So I'm also going to have a mentor to handle the submit. When you click on search, you click on this search, you want to handle the submit. What's going to happen? Let's just call this handle search submit. So this is going to be an async and it's going to take in all the events, your HTTP events, and let's just prevent the default behavior first. Then after that, I'm just going to navigate to our home page where we are going to pass in the search value. So we are going to also write that out. So let's for now, let's just say, navigate to the home page and pass in the search value. So in our home page implementation, we are going to see how to collect the search value and use to query the database to return those item. So that has been done. And let's also just quickly have a mentor to log out in case a user wants to log out. I will also be displaying a log out button here if a user is not logged in. If a user is logged in, I want to I will also display a log out button. If a user is not logged in, then I will have to display a login button. So if we decide to click on a log out, let's have a mentor to handle log out. So let's call this handle log out. It's going to be but just basically first of all prompt the user if he actually wants to log out. So we don't just log out immediately. So let's use a prompt, which is a window dot confirm. Let's just say, are you sure you want to log out? If this says yes, I want to really log out if it's that's if confirmed true then we're just going to run the logout which basically we are removing the token and the value of the user and then i'm just going to set navigate to the login page so let's just navigate after like one second let's just use like milliseconds so here i'm just going to Call the navigate is going to navigate to the login page, which we are going to do shortly. And this is going to are going to navigate using 0 0.1 millis 0 0.1 seconds, which is 500 milliseconds. So yeah, so that sounds good. So let's now write our templates, our nav template so here i'm just going to return the template this is going to be nav and within the nav i'm just going to create a style let's call this nav bar and within this nav i'm going to have a div and let's just call this styling nav bar brand so this is going to contain our brands just be, let's wrap this using a nav link nav link then let me just um, just break it there then here if you click on that let's just navigate to our home page and here I'm just going to wrap this in an image tag and our source is going to be I'm just going to put in an image in the public folder let me do that quickly um go over here download just get this come to our public and this is just like the name of our e-commerce figure mat 
So let's go back to where we are. Let's just say our source is going to be dot slash. When you create dot slash, it's going to like, you know, just first of all, go over your static files and search for what you have there. So I'm just going to get the figon month it's a png file so just take note of the extension and if it's not there if we're not able to get it or maybe somehow somehow we just return the link called figure mat a an odd called figure mat so below i'm just going to have my form and here i'm just going to First of all, give it a styling, which we're going to write quickly. So that's going to be nav bar. So first of all, let's just have a search form. Let me just, let me just comment this out so we can know what is going on here. Put this for search as we want to do something like this. Just this after the logo, we need the search input. So here I'm just going to have an input and the type is test. Just auto completed. So placeholder, let's have a placeholder that say search products. Then the value is going to be our search product here, which is the value here, search value. Let me move this to next line so we can really see what's going on. And then on change, if there is a change, if a user start typing in, it's going to trigger the on change. And when that happens, we just want to collect the value and save it. That's what this method is doing here. And do search change. It's really going to collect the value and save it in this search value variable, which is going to be displayed again to the user. So that looks good. And let's just have a button to so search. And type is going to be submit. And let's just call it search. Let's not do something very crazy. So here, I'm just going to put the on submit here, which is going to handle search submit. Handle search submit, which we already wrote here to handle search submit. It's basically just now going to navigate to the home page and passing a search parameter, which we are going to be captured on the home page implementation and query and return the value. So yeah, so this looks good. So let's just move forward to write our remaining nav list items. So yeah, so move down. And here I'm just going to have a div. So let's just call this, give it a styling of nav bar link. So this I'm just going to have a nav link and here we have a tool is going to navigate slash is going to be our home and also do that for others so let me just copy this and paste in multiple times so we're just going to have in a categories just going to call this categories where user can navigate to the category here. Let's just call this my account when the user is logged in. And here, let's have an admin. If you're an admin, you be able to go here. So let's have a logged in, log out, and a cat. So for here, I'm just going to Call this categories. That's you are going to be navigating to categories page. Here, let's call this profile page. Here, let's call this admin page. Here, they just when you click on 
a when you click on login you should go to login page to login when you click on logout we should not navigate anywhere let's just have one click here to, to probably log out which we already have let's just say on click is going to undo logout and then for our cards if you click on it let's go to our cards yep so that looks good and also we don't want to show all of these to the user we only want to show my account to log in user we only want to show admin to admin and if you are logged in we should show log out if you're not logged in we should show log in so to do that i'm just going to wrap this in some condition here i'm just going to say not categories so here i'm just going to say wrap this in some kind of condition which is going to be is authenticated if you're authenticated then show you my accounts why for the other one if you're an admin is admin show this show the admin page why for this if you are not authenticated then if you're not authenticated then show a login but if you're authenticated don't show a login for the other one if you are authenticated then show a logout if not show a if you're authenticated just have a logout there in case you want to log out so for the card it's always there yep so this looks okay so let me just um what was gonna let me just over here let me just put in an arc um active class name If it's active, I just want it to like for us to know if it's active. Um, I don't know if this is a good thing, but yeah. So let's just put that everywhere within our nav. And here I swear. I think the log admin in this. Yep, so this looks good so we haven't exported our item so let's do that quickly let's just export default navbar so what was, how did we save it navbar yep so this looks good i just just check if we have an error no error for now so let's quickly just have write the styling for our navbar is going to be pretty straightforward first of all let's just have a body which is going to have a font family of area sans serif then we are going to have margin zero and padding zero. Then dot nav bar. Let me display this to be flash. I this is not basically a CSS course, so yeah, I'm not going to be spending much time trying to explain what this does. Yep, yep, yep center background color id preselected a color which is f6 8 e 1 e it's going to be like the exact color for our design yep so padding 10 px up down then 20 right left then let's have a font size of 20 pixel 
and let's have a font weight of 600. So that looks good. Then the nav bar brand is going to be our brand. So let's get the image. Here I'm just going to give it a height of 40 pixel. Then let's style in our input. It's going to be like straightforward dot navbar. Let me just get it here. There's the input, which is this. So navbar search button. Let's capture the button. And before the button, let's just, I think let's um, start the input as well first. So here, let's say input. So this is going to target that specific input. So padding is going to be 10 pixel all around. Then width is going to be 500 pixel all around. And border, let's just make it none. Then let me give it a little bit of border radius, which is three pixel. Then for our button, I'm just going to say padding is going to be 10 pixel around. Then border, the same thing, none. Then manji left, let's just say two for now. Then a background color let's make it to be white so you see a color let's use this color yeah i think it's our primary color then we're going to have font width just going to be bold Font width. Then border radius. Go to be three pixel. Then for cursor is going to be a pointer. And yeah, so let's just add our last styling, which is going to be our navbar link. So let me just copy this here and go. Yeah, which is going to be dot navbar links and li. Do we have li? No, we don't. We don't have li. So yep. So it's going to be our navbar link, and here I'm just going to test decoration. None. We don't want those kind of stuff to be color. It's going to be fff. Margin is going to be zero ten. The X font weight is going to be bold. Then line style, we will line style here. This style we don't need list style. We don't. We're not using a list. So yeah. So that looks good. That looks good. I think this nav link is going to be captured as a list. Yeah, so let's let's add that. It's going to be captured as a list. Yep, so li. So let's just see. Yeah. So this looks good. Let's quickly write our footer and then run our application to see how our design looks like. So here I'm just going to my footer. Yeah, I'm just let me just put in my common here i'm just going to have a new component i'm just going to call this footer dot gsx so here we're going to import react and we're going to import we're going to be having our footer style so let me just quickly write it here within my style let's create a footer style call it footer dot css so here in our footer we're going to be importing it dot slash dot slash 
style slash footer na dot css yeah so that looks good then import our nav link in case we want to navigate or like yeah const footer cost to an arrow function and here i'm just going to return a template which is going to be footer and here i'm just going to have a div and here let me give it the class of footer and the div is going to have a class of I just call it footer links. So here I'm just going to have an UL and we are going to have having our hard nav links. So yeah. So here too is going to be home. Let's just call this about us. And so I'm just going to have a couple of these here. Yeah. Contact us if you want to contact us. This is our terms and condition. If you want to know more about us, our terms and condition for shopping and our so let's have our privacy policy. Terms of it, you know. So in case you want to sue us, we'll kind of just tell you that, look, we have everything ready. So our FAQs, yeah. So that's that. And let me have another div here. And here class name is going to be footer info. Let's call that footer info. Then here, let's just have a P and here, let me just say copyrights and the year. At where is that? Absalom. I'm um, copy. And let's just say 2824. You can probably use your get your dates or maybe JavaScript dates, but I don't really want to do that. And it's none of the e commerce is figure month, then all right reserved yeah so this looks good and let's quickly move down to write this styling so let me just follow up here to go to the styling here so here i'm just going to have dot footer which is going to position should be fixed so want it to be at the bottom then should, the bottom should be like zero, which should be like 100%. What am I doing? Then the background color should be black. Let's use 333. Three, three. Then the color should be white. That's FFF, pure white. Then the test align should be at the center. Then the padding, let's just say 20 pixel up and down, zero left and right. Then our Z index is going to be 1000 as we want it to be fixed at the bar bottom. So dot footer links, let's type our links. We had a UL, so list tie is going to be none. The margin is zero, padding is zero. Let's display flex, it's kind of really cool. Justify content, let's make it at the middle, center. Then margin bottom, margin bottom, let's shift it to the, from the bundle are like 20. Then footer links A, let me just copy this. This is going to be the link and here i'm just going to 
don't need any of these so here test decoration is going to be none we don't want those kind of underscore link stuff so color is going to be white um font weight is going to be bold margin zero up and down then 15 right and left then also finally they just styling our p that's footer info that's p and we just need a margin of zero yeah so this kind of looks a little bit, a little bit good so let's go to our app.js and configure this to check out so in my app.js i will not be needing this so let me just get rid of this so here i'm going to not be needing this as well so here i'm just going to first of all import some stuff like our browser router our routes our routes our navigates the add is what is that why am i coming here so let's go back to our app.js so at the same time i'm going to bring in my guard which we are going to be using to protect so let me just import it right now so i'm going to import protected routes and admin routes service.guards protected route let me just capitalize this admin route so where is that again out of css let me protected routes and admin routes yeah so then I'm going to import my navbar and footer. Navbar and footer. Seems like why well, my footer not coming up. So let me go to my footer again. Okay, we are not exporting our footer yet. So let's quickly do that. Yes. Default, default footer yep so so we can you can see here is input so we can import it so that has been done so here now i'm going to wrap everything up in a browser router so let me just forget it of this for now so here I'm just going to say browser router. Everything should be wrapped inside a browser router. And here I'm just going to before then I'm going to also import our cat provider since we are going to be we saw earlier that in our cat contest we saw our cat provider which you said is going to be we're going to be wrapping our app using a card provider so you can keep an eye on the state of our app to know if it's been added to card has been removed like it's just going to be in a watcher so we're also going to be importing that as well so go to my over here and just say import card provider yeah so here i'm going to wrap everything is inside a cat provider so cat provider again and then i'm going to have my nav bar here which is going to basically exist throughout our application nav bar and then our footer is going to be at the bottom footer then all our endpoint is going to be wrapped around using the route 
yeah so all our endpoint is going to be here so let me just see our endpoints is that is it called endpoint our routes yeah let's see routes i kind of used to back in now so our routes going to be here which is going to be your home routes your login your logout and those kind of stuff so yep 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 so we're having a warning new cat is not defined so what happened did i did i take something back um one second line 58 okay cats new cats Okay, I think here we need to like we don't we should not say new cat. So clear cat remove state cat will be an empty array. So when we clear a cat, so the cat will be an empty array. Yep. So I think please make this update at your end. When you clear cat and you are removing the cat, then we are setting the states and the cat should be an empty array because there should be nothing there. Yep, so that looks good. So let's just make sure our app is running. Fine. So for now, it's telling me that routes is different whenever I use. So let's me comment this out and see. Just a warning. Not really something serious. Yep, yep, yep. Let me just comment this out one at a time. All right, so it's not a serious stuff. Let me just cut this away and um, yep okay yep so yep so let's just go and check if our app is running fine we can see okay it seems to be running fine but our styling is bad so let's just go back to the styling and see what is wrong okay in my nav bar let me see what's wrong here move this down and let me just try to format this yep 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 okay so this should be nav bar not nav number <laughs> So navbar, yeah. So let's just check again. We can see our navbar seems to be cute. Like, yeah. So for now, we have login cat category home, and our footer here, and yeah, it's it's, it's cool. So let's proceed.